In this video, we're going to be looking at parallel RL circuit, a parallel circuit with a resistor, the R, and an inductor, the L, parallel RL circuits. And we're going to be looking to find the impedance and the total current. So let's take a brief moment to look at the change from series to parallel circuits. In series, the constant, therefore my reference, was current in all parts of the circuit. Now that we switch to parallel, what's the same at the source and on each branch is the voltages. So now voltage will be my reference. Voltages will be on the horizontal line. And here I have the various sine waves drawn up, so we'll see how they compare. Voltage is going to be my reference. That's the same and in phase on each branch. So what is, which current is in phase with the voltage? Well, that's going to be my resistor. In resistors, the voltage and current are always in phase. And therefore, it crosses zero at the same time, peaks at the same time, crosses zero at the same time, goes negative, right? Tra the resistive current and the voltage track each other. Now the inductive current is shifted 90 electrical degrees. Remember with my sine wave, a full sine wave is 360 degrees, 60 complete cycles in a second when I'm at 60 Hertz frequency. So what we're gonna do here is calculate a current for each branch, and then we're gonna recognize that they're 90 degrees out of phase from each other. So I can't just add them using straight math because they don't peak at the same point. They don't cross zero at the same point. They're out of phase. And how do we add things that are 90 degrees out of phase? Right triangle, Pythagorean theorem, okay? So let's take a look. First thing I wanna do is look at the currents. We're gonna come back to uh, impedance in a little bit, but let's look at the currents. How much current flow in here? Well, I got 50 ohms. Ah, first thing I like to do, parallel circuits. Take my voltage and actually physically write it on each branch. Now that I have it written there, it's, it's more intuitive. I have volts and ohms. Can I figure amps? Yeah, ohms law. 120 volts divided by 50 ohms, 2.4 amps. So let's look at the inductor. Volts and, oh, that's right, Henry's not in there. We gotta figure our ohms. What's our formula? Thirty-seven point seven ohms. When we have an inductor of one tenth of a Henry at sixty hertz. Now, one twenty volts divided by thirty-seven point seven ohms equals three point one eight amps. And as we look at this circuit, we're going to realize that there was more opposition in the resistive branch, and so less current flowed. Right? More current flowing in the inductive branch. Okay. Now, how do I add these currents? You'll notice on your formula sheet, you've got a total current under the parallel side of your formula sheet. Total current, equals my resistive current squared plus my inductive current squared and take the square root of the total. Pythagorean theorem, our buddy Pythagoras to the rescue. Here's my numbers entered and what does that equal? 3.98 amps. And we'll notice it's greater than either one of these but less than the straight math sum of the two. It was added vectorally. Some of us like formulas, some of us like sine waves. Let's look at one other way of drawing this. My reference 
in a parallel circuit is my voltage. So it's on the horizontal line. Okay. And which current is going to be in phase? The resistive. So it comes down to where does my inductive current go? In series, the triangle's pointed up, but here I'm actually gonna point the triangle down. Why do I point it down? It's because of Eli. Across an inductor, voltage comes first, current lags. It's right here. Here's the voltage and the inductive current is 90 degrees behind it. Now, in series, current was the reference, so inductive voltage was ahead of it 90 degrees. But since we made the flop, and in parallel, voltage became the reference, if that's at the zero degree line, this is down at negative 90 degrees. So the voltage is at zero, the current would still be at negative 90 degrees, 90 degrees behind the voltage. And since I have this line and this line, the vectoral sum would be going over this far and down this amount. And so we would draw it down there, current total 3.98, the right triangle sum, the vectoral sum, Pythagorean theorem sum of these two currents. And I'm going to point out angle theta. Because there is more inductive current than there is resistive current, the angle is pointing more down than it is horizontal, right? The inductive current has a larger pull on this, so it's pointing down more steeply. If there had been more resistive current, this total current angle would have been drawn up. So we have a greater angle, the more reactants that we have in a circuit. That brings us to impedance. The easy way at this point, because we have total current and we have voltage, is simply to use Ohm's law. We can use Ohm's law in any particular part of the circuit. 120 divided by 3.8, 30.1 ohms. That's what it equals this way. And does that make sense to us? Can there be 30 ohms here, when I have 50 here, and 37 here. If we think of what we've learned of parallel circuits in the past, the total opposition, it was resistance in the past, total opposition in a parallel circuit was less than any of the branches. And what we're gonna find out here in RL, RC when we get to capacitive, and RLC when we put them all in together, is that the total opposition has to be less than the resistive amount. And in RL, it has to be less than either one of these. So the reason I left this to the end is I want us to realize a common hiccup here. In series, we immediately drew an impedance triangle with our resistive ohms, our inductive ohms, and we got our hypotenuse for Z. But let's think about this for a moment. If I had 50 ohms here, 37 there, my hypotenuse by definition has to be longer than either of the sides but my total opposition in the circuit has to be less than these two sides, uh, either side in an RL circuit. So I can't use a triangle. 
leaves us with two other methods. Two other methods. So this is the hiccup. Don't try an impedance triangle. Don't try an impedance triangle for parallel circuits. There isn't one. We just have triangles for current and for power with parallel circuits. So we have two methods, like I mentioned. One is to figure your currents, add them vectorally, and get a total current. Use Ohm's law to get my impedance. But there's also a formula we could use right here. And as you notice, it's kind of a mashup of product sum, but that's not really a product sum. It's, it's got Pythagoras stuck in here. So it's a mashup of product sum and Pythagoras. And if you plug the numbers into here, you would end up with 30.1 ohms. So to recap what we've done, we had a parallel circuit, we wanted to figure impedance and current. Could have used the formula and figured impedance right away, used Ohm's law there and come up with my current. Could have done that. Or we can figure the current flow here, the current flow here, understand that those two currents are 90 degrees out of phase with each other, so we add them vectorally, Pythagorasly, and with our total current, use Ohm's law to derive our impedance. And remember your parallel rule, that the total circuit opposition, impedance, will have to be less in an RL circuit than either the resistive component or the inductive. So there's no impedance triangle in parallel.